Hi everybody, this is Luke. If you are a returning visitor of my channel, you might know that I cover many aspects of the mid-drive e-bike conversion kit experience. If you don't know that yet, this is probably the right moment to hit the subscribe button with the bell icon. There are, however, some specific aspects that I haven't covered yet, and the reason might be one of the followings. It might be that, for a specific topic, there is a bunch of information already available. My goal is still to make your life easier, publishing contents that you might not find elsewhere. So I don't see the point of putting more irons on the fire, right? Or maybe there are already some high quality materials about a topic. So instead of making something that would be less interesting for you, I prefer to link you someone else's content. This is the case, for example, for a step-by-step -step guide to mid-drive kit installation. There are amazing YouTubers out there, and it can be a real pleasure for me to share links to their videos when they are worth watching. But most importantly, I won't share contents about something that I haven't yet experienced myself. It's not the way I act in general. So to those guys out there getting crazy about the subjects I haven't covered, well, it just means I have not gained enough experience yet to show you that topic. By the way, I'm not a wizard. The idea is to guide you in a journey, keeping you updated with my experience the way it is, and hopefully help you with your journey with e-bikes that might be different from mine. But I will never share a supposition or speculations about something I haven't yet tried myself. I hope you will appreciate that. Talking about a topic I haven't covered yet, one for which a lot of you ask in the comment section of my videos, the Motors firmware programming topic stands out. Even if it doesn't seem to be so, this argument is huge. There is a lot to talk about here, and a simple video won't be enough to explain you all that you need to know. Moreover, you already have a lot of material existing about this thing. You just have to do the right search and all the good results will be shown to your screen. I have watched some of those contents and then I ask myself, what are the most important things that you need to know before start and that you haven't already seen elsewhere? Today we'll talk about the Bufang BBS-02B and all that you need to know to start the adventure of reprogramming your motor. We'll cover OS requirements, USB driver installation, which software to use, the basics to tune your Bufang mid-drive kit. Now that we're ready, let's move to the video. For this first round of demonstration, I'm here with the Bufang 500W e-bike build. One important part of the process is that the battery must be attached in order for the process to work, otherwise you won't see the motor. In order to connect the motor with the computer, we're going to use this adapter. This one is the plug of the motor's display, so the display will need to be disconnected. The other part of the adapter terminates with a male USB Type-A 2.0. It's just a chip on a USB device on which the cable wires are soldered. You can find the Bufang programming cable on Amazon, on eBay and on many other marketplaces. If you feel brave enough, you could eventually also build one yourself. So we're gonna start with that. Should be this one. Now just connect the female adapter to the male connector and be aware of the position of the pins. This red light should inform you that you are currently connected to the motor. Now let's talk about the computer. If you have a laptop that you can bring closer to your bike, you can call it a day. But since I got just two fixed PC and a Mac and this toolkit will work with Windows, the only way to start my test was to simply assemble a test bench using the oldest, cheapest board that you can get. This board right here is 10 years old and that is more than enough to complete our test. Okay, so let's power it up. Now the only thing left to do is to connect the adapter directly to our Windows machine. In my garage there's no internet connection, so the first thing to do will be to download the Bufang programming tool and then move it downstairs to the PC in my garage. The correct site you need to look for is this pin-off hobby page. That's the way it looks like. And here you can download the program. You may ask yourself why should you trust this page. And this short description here basically say everything. This cool guy here managed to rework the original software to make it look better, fix a couple of bugs 
and also he nails his compatibility with the recent versions of Windows. That's why I decided to go for his version of the toolkit instead of the others. It's even better than the original one. To download the software, just click here and start your download, selecting the slow speed. And that's it for the toolkit. For the cable driver instead, you can simply look in the description of this video down here. I made it available for you. Now that we extracted the two packages and we are back on the test PC, we need to install the USB driver. The fastest way to show the device manager is simply to right click on the start button and select device manager. The unknown USB peripheral will show up. Double click on it and let's just browse to the position where we extracted the USB driver. If the installation fails, it may be because you selected the wrong device, or maybe your cable needs another driver to work properly. Once installed, take note of the USB serial device port. In my case it's COM3. Once you open the Buffan configuration tool and your motor is currently connected via the cable with the battery mounted and turned on, you can select the COM port you noted before and click the button Connect. You'll see your motor's controller information, like the nominal voltage and the maximum current. To load the motor settings, you need to click the read flash button. All the fields in the basic tab will be reloaded. A good practice would be to just save your default settings. From the file menu, select save as and save your file with EL extension. Now you can safely mess up with your configuration. You may want, for example, raise your low battery protection to 32. You will have less battery available, but you'll make it last longer over time. Or you can lower your current limit to go slower, saving battery to cover longer distances. About assistance level, what you need to know is that your Bafang motor will push you until it reaches one of the two limits, current or speed. I'll put a link in the description in case you need more insights. This is the pedal assist tab. A lot of options here but we don't have enough time to cover all of this. Again, check the link in the description if you want to know more. About the throttle handle, you have less options, but really interesting. You can change the speed limit, the acceleration mode, even select a fixed assistance level. That's pretty handy. When you're done and you're sure about your settings, remember, this is at your own risk. You can hit the right flash button. I'm okay with my settings, so I will simply close the program. Let's try to change some settings this time. In this scenario, we'll use the 750W Bofang build, connected to a more modern machine that runs Windows 11. As the last time, let's turn up the battery first. The right cable plug is the one with the green marker, the male one. Let's also connect the cable to the bike side and then to the USB port, taking care of not damaging the soldered part. The way to go to the device manager is, at least today, the same as on Windows 10. I also use the same cables driver and it works correctly. That's a good thing. On this machine, the target COM port is the number 5. Let's open up our toolkit as usual, no need for admin privileges. And then, let's select the right port. When we hit connect, the controller info will be populated. Also, don't forget to hit the read flash button to load the settings from the motor. I'm ok with the basic settings, so I'll just leave them as they are. Don't worry in case you mess up with the settings and you want to revert them. At any moment, you can just click on the read flash button again and all the last written settings will be reloaded into the UI. Now you can start over. What I want to change in my configuration is the throttle handle tab. First of all, I want to increase the range of control of my throttle. I like the end voltage to be a little bit higher, but it also starts too much strongly for my taste. Let me lower this down to 5%. Ok, that would be good for me. So I can go on and write down my configuration to the flash memory of my motor. Since I wrote something, I also like to disconnect the motor. And finally, close the program. When you want to unplug the USB cable, please hold it from the chip. This way you will preserve the soldered parts. Then you can power off the battery, remove the cable from the green plug and put the display back where it belongs. Hey guys, I just want to share a couple of thoughts before leaving you with your Bafang tuning. As you have seen, this is not a complete walkthrough of the Bafang configuration tool, but it should still be a comprehensive guide with all that you need to know in order to start prepared enough. If I may suggest you a few tips, I will encourage you to change one configuration at a time so you can see if you feel any difference, and once you have done with that, pass to the next one. 
Another thing that has helped me is doing incremental profile saving, meaning that after the first time default profile saving, I also save the profile of every single time I bright flash on the motor. Once I test the configuration and I know which one I like, I delete the bad ones and just keep the goods. Every save is one kilobyte of data, so don't worry to run out of space. The last hint, my friends, will be to hit the like button if you like this video. It's not just for me, but it's also the way for YouTube to know which are the contents that are worth watching. This way you're actually voting for a better YouTube experience, for you and for other guys like you. And in case you don't want to miss my future videos, go and smash that subscribe button with the bell icon. That's it for now, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Go and smash that subscribe button. Go and smash that subscribe. Main skedam madrum is if I change the figure the map.